Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rahul Bangan from Treasury Consulting Group. And also a second year law student. In today's video, which would be spanning approximately 10 to 15 minutes, I would be highlighting a very important point. And in today's video, I would be playing a dual role, which means I would be playing the role of a hedge fund manager. And also, I would be playing the role of a second year law student whose specialization is EOW. By EOW, I mean economic offenses win. But before I start, I play my sincere regards to Taxman. Although I already paid my sincere regards to Taxman many times, but once again, I wish to pay that. I always found out that Taxman books are very good books. The language which they are using is really a wonderful language. And more importantly, the way they interpret is really an amazing fact. Because in the law, a very important concept is called interpretation. And that interpretation is very, very essential. One of the finest USP, unique selling proposition in the law, is that interplay, which means when two or more acts are having an interplay or they are speaking with each other. In today's video also, at least two acts are having an interplay. The more we delve down, now in English, the delve down means the more we deep down, the more interplay we would be able to see. With the sincere regards to Texman, I would like to show you the two books which I'm referring to. Now, this is book number one, which is the securitization, which I bought it from Amazon. This book is by Texman, and believe me, this is really a very good book. They highlighted the few important and the burning points of Securitization Act. I really thank you to Taxman for this. And more importantly, the second book which I'm highlighting is the Securities Contract Regulation, which is shortly known as SCRA, Securities Contract Regulation. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, we need to learn that the whole purpose of having Securitization Act is to make sure that the money, which is, I would say, caged, caged means due to non-performing asset, due to willful defaults and XYZ means, you understand, the money which is caged can get free and once again back to the banking sector. So that bank can lend this money to those people who really deserves or who really need that. Remember that, be it any economy of the globe, one of the important parameters is that the flow of the money. If the flow of the money is not good, in this eventuality, be it any country, they face the higher interest rate. And Economic-wise, history-wise, it is very clear that higher interest rate cannot be conducive for any country of the globe. Today, in 2023, we are witnessing that central banks are increasing the interest rates. And because of the increase in the interest rate, the job losses, the layoffs, the, the non-performing loans, these all things are growing. Yesterday, without quoting any specific name, when I was doing my research on the internet, I found out that few top banks of the globe, they are having substantial non-performing assets in their books. And now, slowly and steadily, they are doing the write-offs of these loans. What is the tactful reason behind that? The tactful reason is clear. The higher interest rate, you have higher delinquencies. A person who borrowed from you, he clearly say, I will not pay, do what you want. Then court cases and all these things you understand. Securitization Act, whether 
worked the way or not that is really a debatable point because to be honest i strongly feel that at few places securitization is a very strong act there is no doubt about that at few places securitization is a very strong act but at few places i believe that there is a need to have a better you know to have a relook of the securitization act because securitization act was promulgated in 2002 by parliament today is almost 2024 24 which means precisely precisely 22 years you know the mark in in financial market the change happens every 6 months every 3 months and it is almost 22 years i request the central government of india to please have a further look as far as the securitization is concerned although reserve bank of india formed a committee about a securitization and the report of this committee is already in the public which is roughly 100 pages and i already read that report at few places i am highly convinced at few places unfortunately i am not ladies and gentlemen securitization act is basically having three top pillars now every act of the world having pillars pillars means the basic backbone of the act now which is enforcement of security interest pillar number 1 pillar number 2 securitization and pillar number 3 asset reconstruction i once again place my request before the central government to please have a relook as far as the securitization and asset reconstruction is concerned because of india wish to have a very strong as well as competent securitization act on table then it is very much essential that we should be in we should be amongst top securitization markets of the globe and this is not a one night job this is not a one week job this is throughout job by throughout means we have to work consistently consistently to achieve this i strongly believe that the three pillars which is enforcement of security interest read with securitization read with asset reconstruction are very important pillars and the basic idea basic idea behind the securitization act is serving that i completely agree few places like qualified buyers creation of the security interest skin in the game trading this is where i have in my earlier videos also i raised the very pertinent point of pooled investment vehicles i believe that in this present century pooled investment vehicles are very much prevalent rather you go to any country on the globe the relevant or the jurisdictional regulator is trying hard as far as the pooled investment vehicles are concerned ladies and gentlemen i already told in my earlier videos that pooled investment vehicle is of two type number 1 public pooled investment vehicle and number 2 private pooled investment vehicle 
पब्लिक पोल्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट व्हीकल आर दो व्हीकल जस्ट लाइक म्यूचुअल फंड जस्ट लाइक कलेक्टिव इन्वेस्टमेंट स्कीम्स हु गेट द मनी फ्रॉम हंड्रेड एंड मिलियंस ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स इन स्मॉल 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 डिनोमिनेशन एज पर हिज और हर फाइनेंशियल स्ट्रेंथ एंड देन दे इन्वेस्ट इधर आर सब्सटेंशियल और अ पार्ट ऑफ दैट पूल इन रेलिवेंट सिक्योरिटीज कमोडिटीज ईटीएफ पीटीसीज पास थ्रू सर्टिफिकेट सी बी एल ओस वट एवर द अप्रूव इन्वेस्टमेंट पॉलिसी ऑफ दैट रेलिवेंट पूल्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट वाइकल वन इज द प्राइवेट पूल्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट वाइकल द प्राइवेट पूल्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट वाइकल इज अ वाइकल whereby there is a thing called investment memorandum agreement shortly known as investment agreement but fortunately or unfortunately this investment agreement is known only to few people because they are the investors rather they are the one who committing that they will invest this much amount of money in that relevant pooled investment vehicle of course they have trustees they have auditors they have investment committee sometimes the investment committee is uh, you know sometimes the investment committee is uh, is including the relevant local person sometimes do not include a local person so there are many issues which we need to sign when it comes to securitization act there is a concept called borrower i don't think i need to explain what is borrower borrower means a person who borrows first of all i am thankful to taxman once again for giving a very wide definition of the borrower but at the same point of time i would be requesting taxman to please reconsider the detailed explanation of that definition because i request on the grounds that pooled investment vehicle is a very big concept i completely agree with taxman that you can have a book on the pooled investment vehicle but having said that my request is on the grounds that at least some part of the pooled investment vehicle should have been covered this is my humble request ladies and gentlemen there is a concept called significant beneficial owner which is called sbo rules 2028 which comes under companies act 2013 which comes under ministry of corporate affairs even in this rule there is a concept called control and in this control also there is a definition of pooled investment vehicle so the concept which is called interplay is definitely into the picture there is no doubt about that it is definitely into the picture now let me study what the taxman is saying borrower means any person who or a pooled investment vehicle as defined in the section 2 da of scra scra means securities contract regulation scra which has been granted financial assistance by any bank oblique financial institution or has given any guarantee or created any mortgage or pledge as security for the financial assistance granted by any bank financial institution and includes a person who or a pooled investment vehicle which becomes borrower of an asset reconstruction company which means any you know person or a pooled investment vehicle who is borrowing from a bank or a financial institution and more importantly at the later stages who become borrower of an asset reconstruction company because there is a concept called deemed ownership in securitization act when a secured creditor transfer asset to asset reconstruction company it comes under deemed ownership now that deemed ownership cannot be defined in this video because this requires a substantial uh, 
a series of video as far as the deemed ownership is concerned. But having said that, there is definitely a concept of deemed ownership. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the pooled investment vehicle, the definition which Taxman is using, they made an interplay with Section 2DA of SCRA. Okay, let's go ahead with Section 2DA of SCRA. Now, Section 2DA of SCRA, which is here also, you can see that. Pooled investment vehicle means a fund established in India in the form of trust or otherwise, such as mutual fund, I told you, alternate investment funds, I told you, collective investment schemes, I told you, shortly known as CIS, or a business trust as defined in the subsection 13A of section 2 of the Income Tax Act 1961. Now, that Income Tax Act section 13A, we would be covering later. Because there are many things which we uh, wish to cover, but we cannot cover since the size of the video would be long. And registered with Securities and Exchange Board of India or any other fund which raises or collects money from investors and invests such funds in accordance with the regulation, this, 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 this. Ladies and gentlemen, there are few issues which I would like to highlight as far as the, this definition of pooled investment vehicle is concerned. Now, number one is the trust. In India, the trust covers under Indian Trust Act. And Indian Trust Act defines trust in two ways. Number one, the public trust. Number one, the private trust. We clearly understand that public and private trust, the issue is the disclosure. But this point is definitely outside the jurisdiction of this video. Now, my interpretation issue is, first of all, in India, we have a guidelines called Alternate Investment Funds 2012, amended 2023. Even yesterday, which is and day before yesterday, 12th September 2023, I found out two or three different articles as far as the alternate investment funds are concerned. In India, predominantly alternate investment funds are divided into three categories. Number one, AIF, category one, category two, and category three. But I technically believe that there are only two categories, category one and category three. The reason being, category two is a residual category, which means that if things do not fall, in either one or three, then it falls under category two, which means our residual category. Residual category is a category who do not have his per se. Very simple. If that category having a per se, then this cannot be termed as a residual category. But still, let's go with the bookish knowledge, which is there are three categories, category one, category two, category three. Category 1 and 2 closed ended by category 3 is closed and open ended. At some places leverage is allowed, at some places the leverage is not allowed. So that's again varies. But one important point is alternate investment funds are predominantly the closed asset entities. Of course, they have their investment memorandum agreement 
they have their trust. There is a data in the public which suggests that majority of the alternate investment funds are owned by trust. And there are very limited number of alternate investment funds who are actually owned by the LLP. LLP means Limited Liability Partnership Companies. Now, my point and my submission here is if any alternate investment fund, say category one or category three, I once again repeat, I'm deliberately not taking category two into consideration because I believe that being a residual category, this should not be taken into consideration. But still, theoretically speaking, if alternate investment fund one, two or three, if you are taking all three into consideration, and assuming any XYZ alternate investment fund, suppose it goes bankrupt. Suppose there are five investors, one, two, three, four, five, who collate 100 crores, 20 crores each into that fund. And this fund invested in some unlisted security of company PQR. Take Ram Lal Cholim Ture, my favorite example. My favorite example, Ram Lal Cholim Ture. Now, suppose this Ram Lal Cholim Ture company went bankrupt. I again say this is a hypothetical example. God forbid if the name coincides, then this is purely a coincidence. Now, if that Ram Lal Cholim Ture company went bankrupt, it means the whole 100 crores which get bankrupt. It means that alternate investment fund, suppose out of the 100 crores, the 60 crores is borrowed from a bank. My simple submission is, can alternate investment fund borrow from banks? Point number one. Point number two, if they're not allowed to borrow from the bank, and suppose they default, for a minute, for a minute, let's assume, then being a private investment vehicle, which is controlled by few people, say one, two, three, four, five example, can this be termed as a party to an ARC? ARC means asset reconstruction companies. Because the basic idea behind asset reconstruction company is that when a bank collates non-performing assets, be it willful default, be it non-willful default. For a minute, keep this, keep these things aside. Then to free his books so that lending and borrowing continues, bank makes money, others make makes money, the, the economic cycle could continue to run. They give these assets to ARC, which is Asset Reconstruction Company under Section 3 Securitization Act. And presently, there are 29 asset reconstruction companies. Practically speaking, these asset reconstruction companies will further sell these assets to the qualified buyers. There is a well-defined definition of qualified buyers. We'll come to this point later. And these qualified buyers invest on the pretext of securities interest. Sorry, security receipts, which is called SR. Now, my point is, when a bank transfer NPA to ARC, then the bank is in public. The bank annual report is in public. The bank share price is in public. Uh, whatever companies say, XYZ, who turns NPA, this is in public. The news is in public. Everything is in public. But when any alternate investment fund collapse, nothing is in public. Nothing is in public because alternate investment funds can even create fund of funds, which means one alternate investment fund can invest in other alternate investment fund. So fund of fund structure is also a lot. And having said that, they are even a lot to invest in unlisted securities. In this eventuality, my simple submission and a doubt which I wish to place giving the ample background of 10 minutes is can a private pooled investment vehicle, I repeat, can a private pooled investment vehicle be allowed to take the assistance 
of all of asset reconstruction companies. That's my humble point. On the grounds of a simple concept known as beneficial owners, probably UBO, ultimate beneficial owners. Of course, even after this video, my research would continue. I will continue to scrutinize the documents, continues to see in case I have some more information about this hot and burning topic. But for the time being, considering the time constraint, it might take sufficient time. In case you have any information pertaining to the question which I am raising in this video, whereby I am linking alternate investment funds with asset reconstruction company as per the taxman book, you please let us know in the comment section. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rahul Magan. Good evening.